35 through 40. Luke 12, beginning with verse 35. Jesus says, Stay dressed for action and keep your lamp burning. And be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast so that they may open the door to him once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at the table. And he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds him awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Amen. I went into Publix this morning, picked up the apple fritters, came back out, and I got in my truck, and I started the truck, and I saw a lady in front of me in the next aisle over in the parking lot, and she had her telephone and she was taking pictures. I looked around and I noticed a duck, female duck. And you know how the public say how these high curbs out in the parking lot? Yeah. Well, Mother Duck, she was down on the regular surface and she must have had about 12 little ducklings. They were up on the curb. She was ready to move on, and the little ducklings were having to jump off that curb, and they jumped off one time. Oh. And they were all gathered in a little circle, and they were following Mother Duck. And all of a sudden, something totally unexpected. Out of nowhere, I saw it. Broke my heart. Out of nowhere, this large, huge crow came flying down and grabbed one of them little ducklings and flew off. Let me say to you, if that mother duckling had known what was going to happen at that moment, she would not have been where she was. Now, for that mother duckling, this was something unexpected. It was something that was beyond her control. It was something that she couldn't even be prepared for. Those are things that we all face in life from time to time. But the Word of God says that Jesus Christ is coming back. And He says we need to be prepared. Mankind needs to be prepared for the return of Jesus Christ. Amen. I titled the message this morning, Knock, Knock, Knock. I wish the pulpit were a little more hollow and that knock was much louder than it was. Because it was this past Monday night that we had gone to bed. Now, when I go to bed, I go to bed. <laughs> I get into bed, my intentions are to go to sleep. And generally, it doesn't take me long. But Miss Nina, when she goes to bed, that means it's going to be a couple of hours before she gets to sleep. <laughs> and she'll go to bed, and she'll lay there, and she'll read until she just passes. I don't know if she was still awake or not, but I know when I went to sleep, she was still awake. She was reading. And I was, I mean, I was out. 
out, I was out like a rock. And all of a sudden, it sounded like at my front door, which is pretty close to the master bedroom, it like somebody had balled up their fist. And with this hand went boom, boom, boom. It was so loud that it woke me up out of that deep sleep. Miss Dina didn't hear it. My mother-in-law didn't hear it. Neither one of the dogs heard it. Only me that heard it. Woke up, I jumped up in the bed. Miss Dina said, what is it? I said, didn't you hear that? No. I jumped across her, opened the drawer, grabbed the gun. I went from door to door, checking the doors. And then, when I discovered that all the doors were secure, I opened the front door and I went out. And I walked around to the side of the house where the old garage used to be, where there's a single door there to check that, make sure that was secure. Everything was fine. I came back in. I went to bed and went back to sleep. I'm telling you, that thing woke me up out of the dead of the night. It was abrupt. It was loud. Nobody else heard those knocks. Nothing I found was unusual at all. But yet, it led to the message that you're about to hear this morning. Jesus Christ is coming back. He's coming back and it is going to be, for most people, something totally unexpected when He returns. Most people will not be ready. Most people will not be expecting it. You know how I know that? Because Jesus himself said, when he comes, he is coming like a thief in the night. Amen. Many Christians, and rightly so, believe in a two-phase coming when we talk about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Probably most of us believe in here what is defined as the rapture. If you believe in the rapture, you believe that it could happen today. That we could hear a trumpet sound and the Lord would descend into the heavens and those who love His appearing will leave this world and meet Him in the air. Amen. That is the first phase of the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now there's some debate of when it may or may not take place. It's really irrelevant. It's going to happen. He's going to come and call His people out of this world. Hallelujah. The second phase says that He is literally coming back, that He is going to set His feet upon this earth, that He is going to set Himself up a throne room or a throne in the city of David in Jerusalem. He is going to set up an earthly kingdom. He will rule and reign on this earth for 1,000 years and those who love His appearing, He says, will rule and reign with Him. Amen. And we must always keep this in mind. Jesus said, no man knows the day nor the hour. That will apply to the rapture. 
That will apply to the literal second coming of Jesus Christ. No man knows the day nor the hour. Robert McShyann was a minister and he would sometimes approach people and ask them this question. Do you believe that Jesus is coming today? Now think about that question. Do you believe that Jesus is coming today? And when he asked that person if he received a negative reply, if whoever he asked that question said no, he would say back to them, then you had better be ready because he is coming in an hour when you think not. Let me ask you this morning. How many of us would live differently today if we truly believed that he was coming back today? Would we live differently? Would we change our attitudes? Would we change our behaviors? Would it affect the priorities? that we have in our lives. I suspect that there would be a whole lot more people in church this morning if a whole lot more people believed that Jesus was coming back today. Why? Because they would want to make sure they were ready. Amen. Now this is a subject that has always risen in times of national as well as world calamities. I mean, we could go back throughout history, Hitler killing his six million Jews, and we can go back to World War I and World War II, we can go back to the plagues, the various plagues that have hit societies and come across the world and swept across the world. There's always been in those times speculations. Oh, this is it. If you spend any time on the internet now, you'll discover that there are people on there proclaiming, this is it. This is the beginning. But people have said that throughout history. And so once again, the day and age that you and I are living in, there is speculation rising about the return of Jesus Christ. Some are looking at this virus that has now affected most of the world, and they're saying, could this be the beginning of the tribulation? Could it be? Maybe. I don't know. Many are wondering if this is a catalyst that will thrust us in to that tribulation period. And listen, I said to somebody the other way, the other day, listen, death, death and disaster has a way of getting people's attention. Yeah. I want you to leave here this morning, if nothing with nothing else, leave here with this. I think we all in here are ready, but all of us have friends, we have relatives, we have people that we know who we, we, we know they're not ready. If the Lord come back today, they would be lost. And I want to say to you, the wisest thing a person can do is to be ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. And the first thing I want us to glean from this text is this. The second coming of Christ is an important doctrine. Extremely important. 
Jesus is coming back according to his own words to take his people with him. He's coming back to establish a kingdom and he is coming back to punish the wicked. The second coming of Jesus Christ, we could say, is one of the most important truths about the Christian. If Jesus is not coming back, what difference does it all make? To deny the second coming of Christ is to deny the Word of God because it is clear for us. And to deny the second coming of Jesus Christ is in reality a sin that is worthy of bringing divine judgment upon one. Some deny it. I'm not talking about in Christian circles, folks. There are people who claim to be Christians today who deny the second coming of Jesus Christ. Then you have the other end of the spectrum. You have those in Christian circles today who sensationalize. Their whole ministry is built on it. But then there's a large mass of people that have this major problem when it comes to the second coming of Christ, and that we call indifference. They're just indifferent to it. <laughs> I want to give you it real quick. Ten reasons why Jesus must return in bodily form. You know when he arose from the dead, he arose in a body of flesh. A spiritual body. Nevertheless, a body of flesh. He died in a body of flesh. He arose in a body of flesh. Of flesh. And so he has to return in bodily form. Ten reasons why. The first one is this. Because the promise of God demands it. Amen. Secondly, the claims of Jesus himself demand it. Third, the testimony of the Holy Spirit of God demands it. God's program for the church demands it. The corruption of the world demands it. The future of Israel demands it. The vindication of Christ demands it. The judgment of Satan demands it. And the hope of believers demand it. And even the groaning, Paul said, of the entire creation itself demands the second coming of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so, as we look at this text, this morning, we do so with the idea that the second coming is both certain and uncertain. The second coming of Jesus Christ is certain, while at the same time it is uncertain. And all you got to do to understand that is read verse 40, and Jesus makes it very clear. First he says, the Son of Man is coming. That is a certainty. Amen. Jesus said he's coming. That is a certainty. That has been written by the hand of God and can be altered by nothing nor anyone. 
And so the certainty is that Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, is coming back again, but there is an uncertainty involved here because he went on to say that he is coming in an hour that you do not expect. So we've got the certainty that he's coming, and we've got the uncertainty that we don't know exactly what. In principle, I believe that this can be applied to both the rapture of the church as well as the literal return of Jesus Christ. Do you know the early church expected Jesus to come back at any time? Both the rapture and the literal second coming will catch people off guard, will catch people unready, will catch people unexpectedly and unprepared. The second coming of Jesus Christ is an important doctrine. And the wisest thing that any person can do is to be ready for the return of Christ. Second thing we can glean from this text says that Jesus here is exhorting man to be expectant and ready for his return. You know if you're expecting something, you'll be ready for it. Let me say that again. If you are expecting something, you be ready for it. Jesus takes the Jewish wedding and he uses the Jewish wedding as an illustration here to, to make the point that he's making. Now, you know, for, in our society, our culture, most weddings take place when? During the day. But in Jewish culture, in biblical days, Jewish weddings were held at night time. They took place, they were held at night, and the bridegroom's servants would wait for the master to come home with his new bride from the wedding. And when that newly wedded husband arrived home at the door, he didn't want to be waiting at that door too long when he arrived. He expected his servants to be at the door expecting him to get home and expecting him to them to do what they were there to do. That was the expectation. His servants were to be prepared and ready to serve him. But as you read on, the illustration takes a remarkable turn here. Absolutely remarkable. Because it says that the master, when he comes home and he finds his servants, he ends up serving them. Wow. He comes home, he ends up serving them just like Jesus served his disciples the night that he washed their feet. King Jesus is coming back. He's coming back. And his servants need to be prepared and ready and yet when he comes back, he is going to minister. He is going to serve those who have been faithful. He is going to reward them 
to the fullest extent. Amen. Oh, isn't that good news? Amen. And so the exhortation of Jesus is what? Watch and be waiting. Watch and be waiting. Anybody in here know General Jack King? He, he works for Fox News. He's a retired, I don't know, four-star four, four general, I think. And he, like, they bring him on to commentate on a lot of world affairs, especially things that have to do with the military. And I heard him two or three days ago. I saw him on TV, and he said this. And he's in a position to know what he's talking about because he still works with the government. And General Jack King said this, there is a major shift taking place in world relationships. Unquote. There is a major shift taking place in world relationships. That means world affairs and nations and our relationships be changed more than we are aware of. You know that a lot of countries are angry with China right now. Speculation has been the last two days that what's his name? Kim Jong-un uh, the Dictator of North Korea, he is either dead or in a vegetative state. Things are happening, folks, in this world. God is in the middle of it all. Amen. Bringing about his purposes and his plans. China has been declared guilty by the world of having infected millions of people with a deadly virus. Attitudes, alliances are changing all over the world. Oh, you know what that means? We ought to be watching. We ought to be expecting. We ought to be aware. We ought to be ready. All times. To watch. Jesus said to watch. That means to be alert. To be alert. To be ready. Not to be caught off by surprise. Not to be caught by surprise. That should be our attitude towards the second coming of Jesus Christ. His coming will be like what? Like that of a thief in the night. It will be unannounced. Unexpected. Jesus Exhorts man to be expectant and ready for his return. The wisest thing any person can do is to be ready when Jesus comes back. Amen. The third thing I would say to you this morning is this. The proper response for every generation is watchfulness. The proper response for every generation is watchfulness. I just remembered as I read that, as I repeated it to you, I remembered my grandfather on my dad's son. He worked in a cotton mill. And you know what his job was? He was a watchman. Now remember he'd bring it home with him. He had this big black clock. It was like that thick. Maybe, maybe that big around. It had a big black 
strap. He bring that. That was his watchman's clock. And he was as a watchman. He'd go through that mill. He was a watchman, and he, you know, he had to be in certain places at certain times watching to see what was going on, making sure everything and everybody was okay. And all, that was his job, being a watchman. And so every generation ought to be occupied with watchfulness. And Jesus here uses four simple things or analogies in exhorting man to be watchful. He said, be dressed in readiness. Keep your lamps lit. Be as servants waiting for their masters and watch for him like you would a thief in the night. Be dressed and ready for his return. You know, Monday night when that poof I heard I thought was a door. I didn't have time to get up and get dressed. If I'd have took time to get up and get dressed, it might have been too late. I was already dressed. I sleep in my shorts. And so when I heard that three bangs on the door, it woke me up. I, I'm 65 year old man almost. I jumped clean across Miss Dina, one side of the bed to go to get to that top drawer. I didn't say let me put some more clothes on before I make my rounds here and check the. I didn't even put any more clothes on when I walked outside, went around the side of the house. No, I was ready. I was prepared. I was expecting. That's why I've got a top drawer beside the bed. Huh? Be dressed and ready for his return. There won't be any time to prepare when he gets here. No, preparation time will have been passed by. No, the time to prepare is now. What Paul say today? Is the day of salvation. We sang that song this morning. We don't know what tomorrow holds, folks. Reminded me of the president how he's told the story over and over again. He has built one of the greatest economies of the world has ever known. And one day they walked into his office and said, You've got to shut it down, Mr. President. Totally unexpected. Imagine that. <coughs> There'll be no time to prepare when he returns. Listen, the only way to be ready for Christ is to be dressed in his righteousness now. Amen. To be clothed in his righteousness is the only means of preparation of being ready for his return. Keep your lamps lit. Jesus said, keep your lamps lit. I was joking with her, of course, I was being sarcastic and carrying on. The other night I had to, you know, I got the flashlight out of my room for something. I forget what it was for, but I was looking for something in the dark. And I left that flashlight laying on the table. And as far as Miss Dina's concerned, that flashlight was out of place. I mean, it can't stay on the table. That's not where it's supposed to be. And so she grabbed that flashlight. She held it up. She said, what's this? I said, that's a flashlight. <laughs> she said, what's it for? I said, well, you turn that thing on in the dark when you look at something, and it'll help you find it. Huh? <laughs> I keep a flashlight in my room. Why? Because I never know where the lights might go. Keep your lamps lit. What's the purpose of a lamp? The purpose of the lamp is to provide light, and light is often used as a figure of knowledge. Light 
is knowledge. Listen, how many folk living in our world and living in our nation today are ignorant of truth? Stumbling around in the darkness when they should have the lamp of knowledge. Later, there was another story where Jesus used the example of lamps with regard. Remember the parable of the ten virgins? Five of them had, had oil in the lamps. That five were ready. Those five were prepared, but the other five... They didn't have any oil. Look, they, a, a, a lamp, an oil lamp with no oil is no good. The only thing you can use it for maybe is a display in your house. You've got to have oil in that lamp. So Jesus later used this example of lamps with no oil to illustrate what? The dangers of being spiritually unprepared. And who are the spiritually unprepared? The lost who are not clothed with the righteousness of Christ. Amen. To have no light is to be lost in the dark. We have been called to faithful service. We're to be alert as to the thief who comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That's what I thought about this morning when I was sitting in my truck and I saw that crow sweep down and grab that duck. Thief. Jesus said, He is the good shepherd. Why did He come? He came to save. Satan is the evil one who comes to do what? Rob man of life. He's a bird. Satan says he comes like a thief in the night. Jesus said he himself is coming at an unexpected hour. We need to be faithful servants, always on alert for the coming of the Master. The proper response of every generation is watchful. The wisest thing any person can do is be ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. I would say take this message with you. I think every one of us in here this morning are saved. We know it. We're ready to meet the Lord. We've been clothed with the righteousness of Christ Himself. And yet again, we've got loved ones. We've got friends. We've got family. We know they're lost. We know they're not ready. And so perhaps God would give us an opportunity to be a witness today, to be a witness tomorrow, to be a witness. Perhaps God would open up a door. We need to be watchful. We need to be on alert for those opportunities that God may give us. We might let our light shine. We might share the knowledge of the truth that God has given to us with someone else. So I would encourage you to seek the Lord's face, to seek His guidance, His instruction and counsel as we sing this closing hymn.